We are live and recording. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello. Oh so, Ray, I mean, you don't need an introduction to these gentlemen, but I'm going to give you one. We have Jonathan Maybury and Ray Porter on our virtual house tonight. And a huge just thank you and shout out. And today is a particularly special day because we are celebrating Relentless. This is when I need to borrow Ray's voice and do like a... Relentless. Okay, there we go. There we go. I know. It's, it's almost like we tried to do that in the green room when we were waiting for the event. But anyways, I am so beyond excited. As you all know, Jonathan and Ray are just amazingly awesome, talented human beings. And the Joe Ledger series is just chef's kiss. I can see all of the woohoos and whatnot in the comment section. You guys already know, but just before I pass it off to Ray and Jonathan, some house rules for all of you. Don't think you need me to tell you where the comment section is, but in case you are looking for it, it's going to be to the right hand side. And then, uh, yes, the Hawaiian shirts, right? I hope y'all are wearing your Hawaiian shirts at Had home. come correct. You guys should dress for the occasion and wear your Hawaiian shirts if you're ever at a Jonathan event. And then also, oh, yay, Rob. Hello, Rob. Rob. Sorry, Rob is one of our booksellers. Hello, but Rob. also, if you guys have questions for Jonathan, which I have a sneaking suspicion you do since we already have six questions, make sure where it says ask a question down below that you click that and ask a question. Now, I would advise that y'all read through the questions. And if there is one that you see that you're like, it is imperative, it is answered vote it up because when you vote it up that will be the question at the top of the list and depending on how many questions everyone asks will depend on how many we're able to answer and then last but not least if you want to buy the new joe ledger book and yeah. nay, not only buy it but get it signed and personalized what? I know in quarantine times slash kind of unquarantine times, that is a rare commodity indeed. But if you hit the buy signed book button down below, you can get the new Joe Ledger book as well as whatever other Jonathan Mayberry books you would like to purchase. And on that note, without further ado, everyone, Ray Porter and Jonathan Mayberry in conversation. Now hey, guys. The the Hello. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I had to dress correctly. It was you a know? requirement. It's important. It is. It's very important. So uh, we're going to just chat for a little bit, I guess, and then get to questions. Yeah. Um, how, first of all, how you doing? Congratulations. What a day. It's been a crazy day, and, and only some of it is stuff I can actually share with the public. You know more <laughs> of it than they do, but there's really good stuff happening today on a couple different fronts, the Kagan, the Dan front, which is coming yeah. out next year and so on. But um, uh, Relentless has has been doing really well it's number 15 of all audible audible books right now and it's number one in three categories and it's like wow that uh and on amazon too so yikes yeah i'm really, really happy with that it's it, i mean you know as as it should be it's such a damn good book i mean I, i've told you how much i enjoyed uh reading it and i got to read it almost before anybody else did really and um I absolutely loved it. It's really, really challenging. It's really, really cool. There's amazing. So however you take this book in, either reading it or listening to it, um, well, they're kind of the same thing. That's a debate for another day, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's well worth it. It's, it's such a good book. And, you know, again, you just keep doing this. You keep every ledger book, like, you know, well, one, one, of, one of the things I hate most about uh, certain series, and I won't name any any names because that would be rude, um, mm. is I don't like the rinse and repeat approach to series fiction, no. where you know it's just another villain. You can cut and paste them from from the previous book, and the hero does whatever he does, but it's predictable. And you know, I've always liked books like one of my favorite mystery series was the, the uh, John D. McDonald's um, Travis McGee series. Every yes, book could be in a different series. There's they're so unique. Uh, same with Joe Lansdale's Happ and Leonard books. Again, every book could be, in a, mm -hmm. be different. James Lee Burke's Dave Robichaux, same thing. I, I don't like uh, a book where I pick it up and I kind of know what's going to happen. I don't want to do that. And I certainly don't yeah. want to write that because for the amount of time it takes to write a book, for the you know, you, you don't really want to be bored by your own process. Well, hell <clears> no. <throat> no. And I can tell you as, as a narrator, it's wonderful that there's, you know, different challenges and different things, you know, both for the audience and for the person who's narrating the book. 
Uh, you don't want it to be like Thanksgiving where it's like, yes, we have this and then this and then this, you know? Um, so it's important to diversify the portfolio. And actually speaking of portfolio, dude, take a break, take a vacation. <laughs> Good God. I I'm looking at this working, risk. Brother. <laughs> well, I know. And I appreciate it. I'm glad you keep writing things because that, that helps pay for my microphone. But um, you sent me this bio and I just want to show it to everybody. It's like days and days. Oh, there's too much glare on the camera, but it's just, it's insane. Um, I mean, I think I've got a good resume and then I look at this Magna Carta and it's like, what the hell? Um, well, life has never been boring. Um, well, no, it, it, it hasn't always been pleasant, but it's never been boring. So and, Patient uh, Zero came out in 2009? Yeah, yeah. Hard to believe. That's when you and I first met. Yeah, and, and they, um, uh, I had no say over them picking you because back then I had no say over anything in terms of my audio. Neither did I. <laughs> I was just happy to get the gig. And, yeah. and you know, from the, moment I, from the moment I started reading it, I was like, oh, I, I know this guy. This, this guy's me in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was a really good fit. But and you know that was only my second audiobook, right? No, I didn't know that. It was my fifth novel, but my second audiobook. Um, was your first from the Rotten Ruins series, or was no, it? No, 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 no. My first audiobook was The Wolfman, read by Fred Berman. I didn't even wow. know they were doing an audiobook of that because it's a media tie-in, work for hire thing. Until right. I got an email from Peter Straub, you know, busting on me for beating him out for the number one spot on 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 uh, the, <laughs> nice. the audio bestseller list. Um, be, with that book, and I'm saying, no, I think you have a, a made a mistake, Pete. And he's like, no, I haven't. And um, wow. and then the second one I had was yours. And then they did. They went back and did the, the Ghost Road Blues books. Okay, that's okay. And then they started doing the Rotten Ruin books. But you were my second audiobook. That's it. I never knew that. So so it was the Wolfman and Patient Zero, and then they started kind of going through your back catalog and going, let's yes. make audiobooks out of this. Yep. Interesting, because yep. this back catalog's redonkulous i mean we've got ghost road blues which i love um then there's the anthologies all of the anthologies that you i mean yeah there's just been a couple it's been a really weird um 15 years since i started doing fiction um it's, it's been a good 15 years since you started doing fiction yeah well you know and also i get i get to, to have a lot of fun i meet a lot of new people like like the the folks who are here you know mm-hmm the uh, the fans have become friends, and that's that's just a yeah. wonderful thing. And also, well, uh, there are a couple here, uh, Maya Cleave, and um, uh, oh, a couple other folks who uh, like Jill Hamilton Krawcheck, which you know I always mangle her name. Both of whom are in Relentless. Yes. Um, so people I know, people fans tend to wind up in my books. They don't always come to good ends. Um, no, no, you do put your characters through a fair amount. No, you only the ones you love, you know. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I so, also but, have but, with you too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, you, yeah, you're constantly throwing. Yeah, thanks for the curveballs in this last book, by the way. The it's linguistic like curveballs. Fifteen different accents you had to do. Yeah, you know why not? Let's go to Epcot Center one one more time. <laughs> so, but I'm like reading this. There was all kinds of stuff I didn't know, like prior to fiction. 1,200 feature articles, 3,000 columns, as well as greeting cards, <laughs> which I immediately imagined Joe Ledger greeting cards. Well, close, because I did some of the early versions, early cards in this uh, shoebox line. Uh, um, oh. The old, little cranky old lady? Yeah. I, I did I did 12 of those. Uh, oh, my God. On. I didn't create the character, but I went up, you know, getting right. cards 12 of those. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. And then it's, obviously it's, your, your, your long uh, relationship with zombies, which uh, zombie CSU is, is out in auto in audio. Now yeah. one of your, one of your older titles, sadly not read by you. And again, I found out they were doing the audio book when it was out. I would have liked to have done it. I think I said that to you at the first time I was ever at mysterious galaxy for a signing. I said, yeah. "Oh, could I please narrate Zombie CSU?" Yeah, apparently I, they weren't listening. They weren't the listening, gods. and uh, I wish they had. Um, no, no slight on the guy who's who's reading it, but um, I'm not familiar with his work before. But um, 
Uh, you you actually made a book on string theory interesting. <laughs> uh, audio book. So if you could do that, I know you would kick ass. The Complete Idiot's Guide to String Theory. Which I, I listened to the entire thing. No way. Yeah, I'm not sure I understood much, but um, yeah, I listened to it. I. Neither yeah. did I. I was actually expecting because the matter is, is something that generally people don't listen to an entire book of. I expected to get like 40 minutes into it and the rest is just silence because they figured nobody's going to listen that far. But, <laughs> but actually it was entertaining. You know, was, Scott uh, Briggs sent me a tweet uh, and I, I convinced him that we should actually try to do this. Somebody tweeted an idea for an audio book, which is like eight hours of breathing and turning pages. And the last second, the narrator goes, Oh, you meant out loud, and that's it. That was the audio book. <laughs> oh, but that would be. Um, that would be I want to. I want to produce that. I'd be like a John Cage kind of thing. Um, you know, those science books are always dodgy. I love physics and I love science. It's always been a massive passion of mine. And you know, you say NASA, and I'm fangirling all over the place. And so I asked for. You know, I was like, I love you know physics books. I'd love to read. I'd love to narrate some of those. And they gave me them. Uh, invariably. Uh, books that seek to popularize some of the higher concepts in physics all start the same way. We're going to make this accessible. Chapter four, you know, and you're gone. I mean, you know, it's why they say a brief history of time is the most successful book. No one's ever fully read. Yeah. Um, you know, cause you're like, I want to get there and they, and they do help a little, but at some point they're just gone. So I, I hope I hope that I did make uh, string theory somewhat accessible. Thing, you know, I listened to the entire thing. Whew, man, you get a gold star. Uh, I was I driving a... back and forth from two, from uh, San Diego to Tucson. By the way, oh. that long route ten in the desert. You know, it, it you know what? Down. That was right around the time my son was born, and I was you know running on fumes anyway, and. I think I've told you this story, but there was a day where I was in my booth uh, and I opened my eyes and I was looking at the ceiling and was like, what, what, wait, I was reading the book and I looked down and there was about 40 minutes of flat line on the recording track because I literally fell asleep in the middle of reading it. That's, and you can hear it. It sounds like hypoxia where I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. and then I passed out. It's not that the book did me in. It was just everything. I was so exhausted. So, and, yeah. and by the way, your, your your son made it into one of my books that you read, which is kind of he fun. is so he is so proud about that, and so am I. I love it. Yeah, yeah. That, that was Lost Roads for those who haven't haven't listened to that yet. Uh, uh, Sergeant August Porter is yes, fun. yes, and you should pick that up anyway. It's a great title. Not just a, I'm I was surprised when I when I read that it's technically a YA. Is that right? Yeah, the whole series is young adult. Yeah. Man, well, I don't write down to kids. I, I tend to write up no, to kids. I, re I remember the stuff I was reading back in the in the, the late sixties, early seventies when I was when I was a kid. I was reading The Godfather, and you, you probably know right. which chapters I'm talking about. Um, I was reading uh, Jaws. I was reading The Exorcist and Rosemary's yeah, Baby. Right. So, you know, I knew as a teenager I could do that. If it was too much for me, I wouldn't read it. So kids can self censor. And um, yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely. We, we I mean, for me, it was Stephen King. Yeah. yeah, we dialed down the the uh, the explicit language in the book, and that was that was pretty much it. Yeah, mm, yeah. Crazy. I mean, it's not like it's not like these kids haven't heard it. Yeah. So, you and know. I grew up in a rough inner city, so you know, definitely we we knew the facts of life. And you're East, how, <laughs> East Coast, where the F word is a pronoun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> so I mean. So there's all these anthologies. There's obviously the Pine Deep trilogy, which is amazing and incredible. And there's offshoots from the Pine Deep trilogy. Yeah. Yes. I mean, well, there's like Ink, Ink for example, is, Ink. is a yeah. sequel to it in a way. Which Stand I love. But also love Ink. Yeah. It's kind of in that world. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Marvelous. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun to do that. The way, I, the reason I do this, where I where I have books that where characters cross over from one place to the other, mm -hmm. I was I was at the Edgar Awards in two thousand seven, um, and Stephen King was being inducted as Grandmaster, and he and I had been up for the same award the previous year um, at the Horror Writers Association. Uh, I was up for two Stokers. I was up for Best First Novel, which Ghost Story Blues won, and I was up right. for Novel of the Year, which Stephen King won. And there's 
no no uh, shame in losing Stephen King for an award. Uh no. By like two votes to which you know I threw in his Dude. face. He threw back to me the fact he had two sons who were voting members. <laughs> so, but at, while we were talking, I was sitting at his table for a while. While we were talking, he said that he really enjoys bringing his characters from one story to another. Mm -hmm. If he if the reader don't know the character, the way it's written doesn't you know confuse them. But if they do know yeah. the character, it's another layer. And he said you should do that. And I took his advice. Well, it's marvelous, and it has very much the same effect because when those worlds, you know, if you if you grow accustomed to a place, you know, a sandbox you've created, a world you've created, and you you sort of live in that while you're journeying through the book. Um, if it was a traumatic experience, let's say, when you start to catch a whisper of maybe we're going back into that place in a successive book, it's remarkably effective. Um, you also kind of understand the geography of it, even though yeah. it's a new story, which is great and really fun. And you it's, feel very smart. Oh, yes, of course. He's referencing, yes, this. Yeah, you know. That's funny. The, the first time I did a crossover was in Assassin's Code. The uh, folklorist who they ask questions about vampires is right. the folklorist from the Pine Deep series, from, from <laughs> the Pine Deep series. And she's that's also fantastic. in the Sam Hunter stories, and she's in Inc., Jonathan Corbiel Newton. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, and course. Uh, I just did an original story for Audible called The Werewolf's 15 Minutes, and, and she's in that as well. Fantastic. Yeah. So I, I love crossovers, you know. Um, what's um, what's uh, Monk Addison and Ledger? Would they ever meet? They will, um, very possibly in the next Ledger book, um, but certainly, okay. if not, certainly in a short story. And okay. Monk Addison and, and Sam Hunter are definitely going to uh, meet. And that's going to be fun. Good. That's fantastic. And then V Wars, the, yeah. the, the monster that is V Wars. Yes, the monster that is V Wars that, uh, you know, COVID partly killed, you know, because a TV show about, uh, you know, a plague, ready to be named a plague, not a cool. Oh, that's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, but, yeah. uh, Ian Summerholder and I are uh, planning to, once the rights re revert back to me um, in about 15 months, um, he wants to shop it elsewhere. And he wants Fantastic. us to be, you know, the, the guys who come up with the, the story that we're going to do, because we both want V Wars to go as, as deep into uh, issues of racism and intolerance in, in, on TV as it did in the books. And they, they didn't have enough of a show. I mean, only had 10 episodes setting up the world in the in the in the season that was on netflix yeah for us to then dig deep into that because the outbreak was just happening at the end of the book and you know the books really hit hit intolerance and racism very hard and the politics around that and ian and i both land on the same page in terms of that so we, we'll, well i think you definitely need uh in that show you definitely need an affable yet hirsute um sonorous voiced person who vapes and uses language that would make a longshoreman cry who would that be i may know somebody okay so send me a cv you know i will i will um can we talk about weird tales for a minute because um that to me is wonderful in that it's you know first of all that doesn't really exist anymore but you know i remember well, i'm old enough to remember back in the steam-powered black and white days um those wonderful sort of compendiums, those, those, those periodicals that would come out that were basically this, which yeah, I, I love two issues as editor of weird tales. Yeah. And I'm, I'm having a blast with these. It's, this is something that, I mean, we're coming up the hundredth anniversary of weird tales. I've always loved weird tales. You know, like, like you have, it's part sure. of every pop culture person's childhood to, to know something about weird tales, the Conan stories, right. the Lovecraft stories. And when they asked me to, to edit Weird Tales, I was like, you know, wait, let me check to see if I'm awake or dead. And, right. And, um, like, we have an issue coming up in December where, you know, it's going to be anchored by Michael Moorcock, um, oh, one of my favorite fantasy writers amazing. of all time. He gave me an excerpt of the next Elric novel, which is the 60th anniversary of Elric. And we're going to run it. And Neil Gaiman gave me a little essay. He wrote about Michael Moorcock for that. So, you know, it's it's That's being so able to great. play with people like that. Tamora Pierce is going to be in that issue too. We we've had so many. We're having so much fun with Weird Tales. Well, think about how many earth shattering titles and 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 how many huge names authors came from 
that from weird tales from, you know, just being able to go and play, you know, with a story in a periodical or something like that. And how many people connected to that, you know, it was one of Ray Bradbury's first, first uh, magazines for publication was weird tales. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, and literally everyone else uh, has, has published there. And a lot of people have published stories that are in the world of, or in the of, because, you know, Lovecraft allowed everyone to, anyone to write a cosmic horror story, you know, based on his, his Cthulhu characters, right. all the way up to Stephen King and, and pretty much everyone else. My next, yeah. my next uh, big series, the Kagan the Dam series, uses Lovecraftian elements in it. Yeah. And certainly Joe Ledger has run into... Uh, um, yeah, once or twice. By the way, do you know how that happened, the, the, the Cthulhu thing with Joe Ledger in Kill Switch? No. So my editor, Michael Homler, um, was out... He comes out every year to Comic-Con. Okay. Diego, and, we, and we always walk around. And in during that, you know, we, we talk about uh, what's going on in the, uh, you know, like what's the next Joe Ledger book. And as a joke, I mentioned to him, oh, the next one's going to be Joe Ledger versus Cthulhu. And he goes, oh, that's <laughs> great. We got to do that. And I'm like, that was a joke. Um, but, you know, I, I literally had just accidentally pitched it to my editor. So I had to go home and pl plot out. How <laughs> Ledger and it was one of the most fun books I ever wrote. You know, I, I loved writing Kill Switch. That there was a there was a period of time there where I was dipping into the Cthulhu world quite often in my narration because I not only had Kill Switch but I had Peter Klein's book, yeah. you know, fourteen uh, happening, kind of around the same time. So I was I was living in that um, world and trying to say those very strange words that are a hodgepodge of consonants. Yeah. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> Peter wrote the introduction to the next Joe Ledger short story collection. Oh, he did. Oh, fantastic. And you know, yeah. in his latest, I, you, I think you read it. The, the, the most recent book in the fold universe. Yes. Has a Mr. Church reference in it. Yes, it does. Yeah. I didn't want to say anything because you know, ah, that's all right. Yes. It's, it's People picked out. it up already. Yes. P Peter's, um, Peter's one of my, one of my good buddies. So he's, he's a great yeah. guy. Peter's a great guy and Scott Sigler as well. I mean, I've been fortunate that I've gotten to narrate such terrific authors. You know, Peter dropped an Easter egg in uh, paradox bound um, for me because he, he came up to a classic car show with me and had me show him around as he was kind of compiling material, you know, for paradox bound. And there's a character that uh, appears in a blue 1969 Mustang Mach one in nice. that book. And when I got to that passage in the studio in London, I screamed out loud and scared a very young engineer. Uh, and then I had to explain. <laughs> That's poor funny. deaf engineer. Uh, poor guy. So well, uh, I just saw a comment. Wait, what about church? Yeah. Got to go find out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the fold universe by, by uh, Peter Klein's is what we consider a companion universe to the Joe Ledger because Peter and I are such good friends. And yeah. he and I and Scott Sigler are talking about doing some something together, the three of us together. Uh, we haven't quite figured out what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be big and weird, and you will probably narrate it. Fantastic. I'm there. Yeah. So it's like a super group. That was that uh, hell yeah, I'd love to do that. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. Hello. Here we are. <laughs> Jeez, we have 24 questions from, from the audience. Maybe we should uh good God, should we just go right to it? Yeah, actually, before we do that, I did uh, yes. I just wanted to share for those who the, the, out of the 116 people here, the two of you who probably, who may not know Ray Porter and by the way, shame on you, um, or know that he was dark side in the recent Zack Snyder extended cut of justice league. You had some really touching news from the family of the people who created dark side. Yeah. I just told you that today, but it was, uh, it was a big, it was a big deal for me. Jeremy Kirby. Uh, Jack Kirby's grandson, who he's kind of in charge of all things Jack Kirby. Um, right around the time that the movie came out, he wrote what Dark Side has meant to his family for the past 50 years. And then he said to me, you did our family proud. Thank you. And I needed a moment to pick myself up off the floor. And I thanked him profusely. And it was like, you know, it was like getting the benediction from, you know, so... Uh, um, <laughs> you know, 
I, I, I may have watched back, the dark side scenes several times. I'm just saying. Back when I was doing Shakespeare in, in Ashland, Oregon, my friend and I would sit around and, you know, there were all these, all these people obviously were like, you know, I, I would love to work at the globe one day, or I'd love to do a merchant ivory movie or whatever. And me and my friend were like, hell with that. I want to, I want to do something where I have an action figure. Yeah. Well, now you do. So and now I do. And I'm really stoked about that. So, <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you want to hit us with some of the questions? Let's do, please. All right. Well, um, let's see. We got uh, will there, um, Mallory said, asked, will there ever be a Joe Ledger movie or TV series? We hope. It's been optioned twice. Um, there was one point at which they were, uh, you know, considering Jeremy Renner as Joe. This is 10 years ago. And Kate Beckinsale as Grace. And the president of ABC decided to do the remake of Charlie's Angels instead. Nice. Yeah, and then uh, more recently, they uh, Sony optioned it again and shopped it. But much as I love the pitch, uh, I think they were pitching something a little too expensive at the time, and um, you know that didn't happen. But they were also thinking of starting with Extinction Machine, and somebody had on the chat had posed a question like, "Why Extinction Machine? You can start anywhere in a series of books and then fill in whatever backstory you need or fold this some of those into that book." Yeah. That's they wanted to hit the ground running where the DMS was already in play. Okay. And maybe, you know, fall back because the guy who optioned it um, was a huge, is a huge uh, UFO fan. And the guy who did it, by the way, was Tony Eldridge, who, who uh, was the, Oh yeah. Or the, the uh, equalizer flex. Yeah. So, great guy. Good friend. Good person for yeah. sure. Now, here's a question for Ray. Okay. When Jonathan introduces a new character to his universe, for example, a new scientist at RTI, uh, what's your process to find their voice? And this is from Dr. Ronnie Coleman, who you a name you Dr. may recognize. Dr. Ronnie actual, Coleman, actual real person for, uh, who who is now in the Joe Ledger books. Yeah. How do you find their voice? Well, fortunately, you're really good at giving a very clear impression of who the character is without it being expository without it feeling like you know dave a tall short man with a blonde voice curly eyes who spoke with a limp you know it, it's it, it, i mean you're you're able to more subtly interject that in <laughs> this is my brain i'm sorry it looks like a hoarder's <laughs> jumble sale um but uh so normally when i come across the character i can kind of see him already and all I need to do is see their face and their voice just kind of happens. You okay. describe, you know, if you show me a picture of somebody, I'll have a voice for them. It may not be the way they actually speak if it's a living person, but if you show me a picture, I'm usually, it just kind of occurs. Certainly that's what happened with church. Yeah. I don't know why church came out sounding the way that he did and you don't either, but he just did. Um, <laughs> And, and now that's how I hear his voice in my head because I had a different <laughs> voice in my head when I wrote him originally. Sure. And then after I heard, you know, the, the, the New England Kennedy accent, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's Mr. Church. Yeah. And it was inspired by an actor who was in a couple of the episodes when I was on Justified. This actor that I admire, he's been around for a while and just the way he was his sort of general thing. And it just kind of came New England. Um, which, which I, actor? Uh, he played, he played, uh, he played the father of, um, of, of, uh, Raylan. Yeah. 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 He's a great, great actor. Brilliant actor. Yeah. But I, I don't know why, for some reason, that's who I saw when I saw church. Cool. Um, and you know, so I'll, I'll pull, I'll pull a picture, uh, you know, like I can tell you what bug looks like. I could draw you a picture probably looks different than what you imagine you, but that's the great thing about books is that, yeah. Everybody imagines everybody looking different. I mean, I constantly hear like, well, I thought the voice of Joe Ledger wouldn't look like that when they see this wreckage. Um, so, you know, you just, you, you have these impressions. Yeah. Now, um, that, that bet Raymond, who, by the way, is one of the group of people who, who did two things. One, she and a bunch of others worked on Joe, the, the nonfiction book, the Joe Ledger companion, which. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, which you can order from mysterious galaxy. Uh, which is literally a companion that I consult and never write a new book. But she's also the, the part of the family that I dedicated Relentless to. Her question, yes. uh, her husband, Ben, wants to know, um, <laughs> 
how many things I put into each book to mess with Ray and Ray uh -huh. didn't get you. Well, I, I usually put two or three things in each book. Uh, yeah. The Cthulhu language in, in Ghost, Ghost Walkers, that's the one that still gets me. You know, Lakota Sioux, it turns out you speak Sioux. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and of course, in Relentless, I was having fun because I'm thinking, well, how many different accents can I throw at him uh, before he actually drives to my house and shoots me? Um, so have, thing, I, have, I, have I ever gotten you? Well, the thing that I love about it is um, it's, it's, it's in a weird way. It's kind of like passing notes in class. Like, I'll know when I get to that place in the book, I'm like, oh, damn it. All right. Now I really got to do it. Otherwise, you know, he'll, he'll have gotten me. So yeah, that's definitely a game that occurs uh, between us with the books. For me, it's great because honestly, I love, I mean, I love a challenge. It's wonderful to be able to, you know, to do that stuff. I remember the first time I came across the language of Cthulhu in one of your books. And I'm like, <laughs> how do I, okay, I'm going to do this, you know, and uh, it's great because it, it's a challenge. Uh, it's, it's wonderful in that way. Yeah. So. I, I, I think the one I tried to get you with in relentless was Joe speaking Romanian with an Italian accent. Thanks. Yeah. 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 That was fun. I appreciate that so much. Boy, was that a delight. <laughs> Yeah. I, I remember when I typed that, I'm like, oh, he's going to kill me for this shit. So, yeah, yeah, there were there were several words beginning with the letter F that were shouted in the booth. <laughs> I may never have used those words in the book, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew, and it was very funny. I actually laughed, but it was just like, dude, really? Okay. You know, and I did my best to try to to try to, you know, tell the story. So I can't wait till I get to that chapter. Um, so, uh, Eric Hammock asks, did COVID strike for me, strike yes. me out of the DMS world? And boy, um, did it, especially the way the politics surrounding it played out. Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of people ask me if I'm going to put COVID into a book and turn it into a plot for one of my bad guys. And I'm not, but COVID does, you know, it, relentless takes place around now when, when restrictions are starting to lift, but still people are still COVID yeah. aware. You know, so all right. So, no. question for me: Who is my favorite character in the Mayberry verse? Is there a character I absolutely love to provide a voice for? Man, that okay. I, this sounds like a cop out, but that's 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 a hard question. I I love so many of the characters, and a lot of it has to do with the interplay between the characters. Um. You know, the just the way, let's say, the way Church changes a little when he's talking with Bug or when he's talking with Joe or when he's talking with anybody else from the team. Mm -hmm. The um, the interplay between, you know, Top and Bunny. Um, and they got uh, a lot of doing Relentless together. They sure do. Um, there's, there's so many different characters. And then obviously, you know, trying to find the voices of the uh, various baddies in the books is always really entertaining. I just like it because these are characters that are fleshed out, that are well-written, that no matter what uh, sort of length I go to in, in making the character, it's going to feel like a real person. And that's down to the writing. That's not, you know, my brilliant performance or anything. It's down to the writing. Okay. I'm better if the writing is good. So thanks yeah. Yeah, to you. Thank Thank you, but I and it's funny because I also write to your to your narration style too. So oh, except, well, except I'm, I'm trying to throw you a curve. That's good to know. Um, See now, I can start throwing you curveballs. I'll start <laughs> singing. Yeah, if you start doing church, you know, speaking in pig Latin, we may have an issue. You know, um, uh, and um, on the Illinois a, a first way. <laughs> uh, one of one of my favorite voices that you do is toys. Um, I love toys. Because you give them a, a, an edgy vulnerability, which sounds like a contradiction, but it's not. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Wow. Like Joe, he's um, tough as nails and made of glass at the same time. Yeah. And he gets more to do in this book, too. Yes, he does. And will yes, in does. future books. I, I've, I, I've only just started listening to the audiobook because, weirdly, they don't give me the audiobook until the day it's out. I know I'm always biting my nails whenever a book of yours comes out because I know two or three days you'll have heard the book. And then I'm like, I hope he liked it. You know, well, so far we're you know, batting a thousand. So we're, we're good. Okay, good. Um, yeah. 
Okay. Well, what else we got for questions? Extinction machine. Okay. For later in the talk, maybe I see extinct, extinction machine and Mars one on IMDb. How the hell would they be able to do extinction machine justice? Big budget, which is probably why the show didn't get picked up when they were pitching it. But um, it, it would definitely have to be a big budget, you know, there's a lot going on in that book. Um, and it is both Joe Ledger and Mars One are on IMDb, but they are not currently under option. Um, there are a couple of, you know, a few of my things under option and Rotten Ruin is in, in development at Alcon, but uh, the option expired on both of those. And so we'll see what happens. This is a great, this is a great one. Um, I am in the middle of a ledger re-listen on Audible. Thank you. But Relentless just came out. Should I keep going on my re-listen or jump straight into Relentless? Uh, well, what, I, do you, what do you want to do? I'm a completist. So when, when I when I when my favorite series comes out, unless it's like like the the Prey series by um, um, John Sanford, which is up to like 35 books. I might re-listen to the last two or three before I, I jump in the next one, but I don't know how far back you are in the series, but you know, it's, it's 12 very long books. Um, so it's your call. I would flip a coin on that one, but that's the rest of your summer. You can think of it like that. Yeah. Now here's one from Eric Hammock for you, Ray. How do mm. you prepare for reading the sex scenes in the ledger books? I'm going to enjoy oh. this. Fortunately, you don't go too vivid. That's not me throwing the gauntlet down. Don't do it, dude. Um, it's a, oh God. Anyway, it's always a little bit weird because I'm sitting here alone in a room making up funny voices. And if it's, if it's a sexual scene, um, that's always a bit dodgy. Uh, I've definitely had to do some not written by you that were, that required a lot more of me uh, vocally than I would really want to, um, you know, uh, so your, yours are always great because I mean, honestly, you know, just as a reader or just as an audience member to me, when you're talking about things like that, it's infinitely more interesting, infinitely more alluring, uh, when things are suggested as opposed to, you know, vivid clinical step by step. and some people love to do that they love to really illustrate in big bright colors what's great about yours is that you know you infer a lot and it makes it interesting you know you require the reader or the listener to invest of themselves in that moment and as a result um they create the moment you know for themselves that to me is the mark of a really good writer Thank so you. I, I consider them more romantic than overtly sexual. Precisely. Uh, um, here's here's another question for you from Sirius Galaxy. Um, what what were some of the new challenges presented to you in the recording of the New Joe Ledger book? Well, I can't. I mean, obviously, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a whole lot about this book. I, I said to you earlier privately that I felt that this book is a terrific way to swing from the DMS to Rogue Team International. It's a real change in a lot of ways, as far as in the narrative, uh, in the perspective, you're seeing a lot more from some of the other characters that we're familiar with in, in previous works. Uh, there's a lot more as far as the interior journey of a lot of these characters. It's a very heavily character driven book, more so I would say even than the events in the book, which are huge. But character-wise, it is incredibly rich. Um, and you will come away from this book knowing Joe and everybody else a hell of a lot better than you did uh, at the end of Rage, which Rage, the last bit of Rage, was possibly some of the hardest narrating I've ever had to do. I can hear it in your voice when I, when I listen to it. Certainly one of the hardest things I ever wrote. It wasn't fun. I yeah. think I, I think I wrote several expletives to you right after I'd finished recording that scene. You did. You did. Um, yeah, they, they and, were uh, so I do think that those people who felt a sense of, for lack of a better word, rage at the end of rage, um, your needs will be met. Maybe not in the way you expect. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, which, which by the way, answers the question that Babette just posted. I cried at the end of rage. Do you mm -hmm. think 
this will satisfy the need for retribution. You you let me know after you've read it if it satisfied your need for retribution, um, because it's left very much to us in many ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Will you ever write a steamy romance novel? <laughs> Some bodice ripping. It, it, I, I, if I do, I guarantee you I will not write a cliche one. Um, Fabio on the cover. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't see that happening. Um, but I, I'm not opposed to writing a romance story. It's just the right idea hasn't come along. And I think, I think I would have to, I would have a hard time selling it to my agent because she'd be like, okay. And have you had the CT scan? I mean, you know, are, are, right. you know, are your meds <laughs> up to date? You know, yeah. <laughs> Remember your audience? <laughs> uh, but then again, you know, I do genre hop a lot. So, you know, anything, I would, I would not say it's impossible, <laughs> but it is improbable. I just saw a comment, Ray on the cover, wind blowing his hair. Do I do not want to see you shirtless any more than I want you first to see of me. All, first of all, several apocalypses will have had to take place before <laughs> me on the cover of a romance novel would be considered remotely appetizing in any way. Yeah, I, I, with your message. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, um, we're, we're much thinner in performance, you know. <laughs> you know, definitely. I, I don't really I'm when I write, you know. <laughs> I have, I have, I have such a face for audio. Um, <laughs> speaking of Cthulhu, Ray, what was your reaction to seeing all of the Cthulhu speech that you had to read? Remember me talking about the words beginning with the letter F? Um. <laughs> That was the initial one. Then I laughed and then I got really excited because I got to try to um, conquer that obstacle, adapt, improvise, and overcome. You know, where do you get to um, Keg in the Dam? Because there's a whole lot of that language in there. So excited, man. I'm so, I'm so excited. For, I mean, A, I really hope I get to narrate Keg in the Damned because, you know, you, you know, that's a big one for me. I'm a, I'm a big like swords and fantasy guy anyway from a long way back. Um, so yeah. And I, you know, I think, I, I think I told you I'm damned handy with a broadsword if you needed any tips. Hey, I know. Didn't you kill Tom Hanks in a play with a sword? Yes, I did. You did. Yes, I did. What character do I want dibs on when Joe hits the big screen? <laughs> I know who I want you to play. I do. I, you've told me that. And I would love to. I would love to, but honestly, as an, as an actor, what would I want to do? I'd want to do Nicodemus. Yeah. He would be my second choice for you after, after Hugo Vox, but we're going to love to do Vox too. Um, yeah. I mean, but, but Nicodemus would be fun because he is one of the most entertaining characters to write because he's a completely different person each time I write him. Yes. And yet, yes. And yet there's still that, uh, Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, uh, but again, you know, that trying to pick would be like, what's my favorite character out of the books? You know, uh, if I got the opportunity as an actor to play any of these characters, I would love to, I mean, you know, short of grace, I don't think I could do that well, but, um, or Doc Holliday. <laughs> definitely not It'd be kind of fun though. The wig, um, She's such a fun character, by the way, Doc Holliday. I'm, I have such a blast with her all the time. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where you've got this big box of amazing, incredible characters. Pick one. I, ugh. What's great about narrating the book is I get to play all of them. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's fun. You know, people ask me why I don't narrate them. Um, I tell them, listen to the books, and you'll, you'll know why I don't do it. This is why I don't write the Joe Ledger books. Yeah. yeah. Though, actually... If these, the, this is news to you guys. There's a there's a two uh, volume Joe Ledger short story collection coming out later this year, and there is a, a little vignette in there called Mister Church's Day Off, written by Ray Porter. First thing I've ever written that's going to be published. I'm very and excited, it, and it's a hoot. It's great. You know, I read it and like, oh my god, why did I never put something like this in one of the books? That's it. Was I'm so very excited. Fun. Yeah, and yeah. I'm chuffed and and very proud and possibly. One of the scarier things I've ever done was sending you that. Yeah, you know? but I, I really loved it. So, you know. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, I wrote something. Yeah, kind of you exciting. did. 
and it will be published in in uh, I, think, oh, I think November. What? I think November is when when we're talking. Do about I have it. any favorite one-liners, and can I say them in character? Um, I, a lot of favorite one-liners, especially from the books. There's some hysterically funny things, and some brilliant things, and some wonderful philosophical things. Um, could I say them in character? I don't really know. I, uh, you know, there, we, you and I had talked about me doing like a um, voiceover for uh, a GPS, in-car GPS of like, you know, Joe, take a left at the next turning, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. That'd be great. Um, well, you missed, you missed that exit, cowboy. <laughs> time to turn around. It's funny because of the way you you did the line. Well, isn't that interesting? The first time I wrote it, it's yeah. now in almost every book. <laughs> Same with what in the wide blue fuck is now in every book because both times <laughs> nailed it so much. I'm like, holy shit! I love. That. I've got to use it. They're trademarks now. <laughs> wide blue fuck, I do love. Yeah. Um, Mike Nav Navala asked, "When can we expect the next Joe Ledger book? Probably will not be exactly one year from now because." We're going to be doing two Kagan the Dam books back to back early next year. Uh, they're going to be six, published six months apart. So my guess, sadly, is about 14, 18 months, 14, 16 months between the, now and the next year ledger book. There will be a two volume collection of short stories to kind of feed your crack habit a little bit. Yes, that that should tide us over for a little bit. Anyway, uh, um, which is good. And that also answers a question about Will uh, Patrick Hefferman. Uh, will Ray do the audio version of Cake in the Damned? I have put a request in. I get a fair degree of say. I don't always get full say, but um, I, I know that when I'm when I was writing Cake in the Damned, that was who I was writing it for to be read. To if read the by. publisher is listening, I am desperate to narrate these books. So you it's know, the ledger publisher, you know, so uh, they know yeah. what I want and. Uh, even though a couple of other audiobook readers have, in fact, reached out to me about them, uh, oh, some people you may even know, I have said, no, I, Ray's got a lock on it. So, Thank you. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's, it's fun to write to you and also to, to try to mess with you as much as I can. But you always foil me. So, uh, well, the thing is, I mean, and you, just briefly, I'm sorry to just sidetrack, but I, and I'll make it as quick as I possibly can. When I get to do a new ledger book, it is like I am going to see my friends that I haven't seen in a really long time. Every single time, every single book. Um, when I get to do any of your writing, I have this same uh, sort of at home happy feeling that I have like, you know, when I've come down to San Diego and we've gone to dinner or had drinks or whatever, it's always just like, yeah, this is good. I like this, you know? So I, I mean, I'm, and I'm a huge, I would be a massive fan of yours if I didn't have the privilege of narrating it. So, you know, this is a very lucky thing. Thank you. And, and as an audiobook fan, I've wound up going through your catalog pretty heavily. Um, you have a lot of audiobooks out there and I've probably listened to 75% of them. I have a few. Yeah, I have a few. Well, yeah, well. I just uh, uh, Andy Weir's latest one just came out, and it's been yeah. doing very, very well. Project Hail Mary is on audio. Yes, yeah, it's on audio, but I bet you it's also available at Mysterious Galaxy. Yes. So. Um. Oh, boy, there's as more questions that we have time for. We're going to have to do another event at some point just to continue ans answering these. You questions. should do an Ask Us Anything at some point. We, we actually uh, on Facebook, we can do that. I'm down. Do yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, outside of the Joe Ledger series, I think your Pine Deep trilogy is your very best work. I know you've done a couple of short stories about Pine Deep. Do you have any plans for new novels about it? Well, other than Ink, which is a new Pine Deep novel, you know, has Crow and, yes. and Mike and Val and, and, and it's set in Pine Deep. Um, I am planning to do another book with Monk Addison set in Pine Deep but I've got eight books sold that I haven't written yet. So I've got to do those first. <laughs> so that's, you know, at my pace, that's like six weeks. Um, yeah. and then I'll, I'll jump into it, but yeah, I, I really do intend to do more Pine Deep books and more Pine Deep short stories too. And we're going to be pitching, pitching a Pine Deep TV series, fingers crossed. I'm seeing a lot in the uh, comments on the side, people just talking about how incredible ink was and how amazing it really was. Dear God, incredible. It, uh, it it was one of the my favorite books I've ever written, and uh, it's probably tied with number one for my favorite books that I've written. I really really loved writing that book, loved the research in it, but man, it <laughs> got dark as hell because Owen Miner is a really nasty villain. 
Um, Boy, that was a fun one to do. Um, yeah. yeah, I loved it. Uh, you know, for me, I mean, in that realm, the short stories that, that I got to narrate uh, are so, some of my favorites. Some of my favorites, absolutely. Your your read of, of there's two two in there particularly that are that are favorites of mine that you've read. There was a collection of of uh, Pine Deep stories called Darkness on the Edge of Town. It's available in audio, um, but we're doing a print. We're going to be doing a print collection of those, so they'll be available in print, uh, hopefully next year. But uh, Property Condemned, yeah. um, which I think is top three of my favorite short stories I've written, and Mister po- and Mister Pockets, Mister Pockets, yeah. I love Mr. Pockets. Oh, he, he's in ink too. Yeah. Yep. He is. He is the only character that both Mr. Church and Nicodemus would be afraid to go up against. Yeah. Because they wouldn't win. You know, it's like one of those, yeah, it's like completely different gravy as far as a character goes. How did we, how did y'all come to start working together? Um, I was working as an audiobook narrator early in my career at Blackstone Audio in Ashland, Oregon. Uh, you can find them at downpouraudio.com. Um, and I was given this book to read. They said, hey, we've got this one. It looks really, you know, it's kind of a horror action thing. And I was like, you're speaking my language. Yes, please. You know, and I started to read it. and was like, okay, I know this guy. I, I, this is how I talk a lot or how I wish I did. I wish I was this cool. Uh, and so I was just given the book and it went well. Jonathan was the first author uh, that had ever reached out to me after the book had come out. And he sent a very nice letter or card, which I still have someplace. I saved it. Um, I was showing it to everybody like, oh my God, look, this author said that nice things about my narration. And then the next one came. And then the next one came. And here we are, you know, however many years later. Yeah, I don't. I've actually lost count of how many books we've done. Um, we've done quite a lot, and I've been very grateful. Yeah, yeah. and I, I've been very grateful. It's a great relationship. That so, sometimes there is that relationship between author and reader. Um, I know that uh, James Lee Burke and Will Patton, uh, also mm-hmm. Stephen King, uh, too. It seems you know. Um, and there, there are a couple others. You know, Tony Hillerman and George Guidel was a great yes. Author. And when when the chemistry is right, it's really right. And um, yeah, this, this has just been a lot of fun. Plus, you know, we we're brothers from another mother too, so you yeah, know, we have so many things in sure. common. Yep. So, I um, mean, not just the shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you full disclosure. I've never owned a Hawaiian shirt. This was sent to me by by your man there in San Diego. Oh, so fantastic! I had to wear it for tonight. That's great. Yeah, I I uh, I do wear Hawaiian shirts occasionally. You like a Hawaiian shirt, and they, yeah. and they like you. Yeah. Um. What do we got here? We've got. I'm looking at three on my screen. What do you want to answer? Uh, just, just, just pick one. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you were the type of person who dressed up their dog, what character from your universe would you make Rosie cosplay? First of oh, all, would Rosie submit to being dressed up? Four or five minutes, and then she would. She would get really <laughs> angry, pee in my shoes. Yeah. But I would love to put her in the full battle kit of that Ghost has. You know, with yes. the arm and everything little, little caps for titanium teeth Jesus, a very tiny version of, astonishing. of yeah that would that would be great um, um what else we got let's see here uh nicodemus feels more like a nemesis for church is santoro becoming joe's since he's now tied with galt for appearances i am going to make no comment about nicodemus at this point that's best yeah that's best what happens uh, if you don't write every day uh, I, I piss off my editors, you know, and I fall behind. Uh, I, I do write, there are writers who are high output writers. I love the fast lane. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I write three to 4,000 words every day and that's what makes life fun for me. And, and you're also I'm teaching able- classes. You're, I mean, you're. For whatever reason, I have more energy than is useful. Uh, and if I was not a writer, I would probably be a menace to society or something. Wow. But um, I, I I love writing, and some it's weird. Some writers like to be published, but they don't like to write. I actually like the process of writing, of you know taking ideas and words and so on. Uh, like I was teaching a workshop last Saturday, last Sunday on uh, writing fight and action scenes, and one of the, the points I made is that when I write a fight scene, it is never the same twice. And I've written a lot of fight scenes, but That's Joe true. never has exactly the same fight. And I've I've read books where. The hero is basically a rinse and repeat in terms of fight scene. 
and that's not fun to me, you know. So that's also not how fights go. Yeah, it's not how fights go. And you know, when Joe's talking to Rudy or Joe's talking to Junie or or Bugs giving information, it's always going to be a bit different. Yeah, um, and that that's what makes it fun. So, um, what else you got? In the Joe series, is reading Limbus Inc. important to anyone's story? If so, which characters? Uh, Limbus Inc. was a series of three three anthologies published by Journal Stone, and uh, in each book, I had a Sam Hunter story. There are there's one story that really does tie into the Joe Ledger books. Um, in, in Limbus Inc. three, um, there was a story called called the um, uh, I'm forgetting what the hell they're called the the, the, the books that you can't you're not allowed to have. Um, they were from Kill Switch, and um, I'm, I'm blanking on what the hell they're called. Anyway. It's it's the backstory of how Violin and um, Sam Hunter and so on encounter one another because of those books. So um, the unlearnable truths. Um, oh yeah. Um, so that one's kind of useful. It's it's more like a side story. It's actually a lot of it is material I cut out of Kill Switch because the book was getting too long. So it, it fell into that book. And um, there's one. Um, called Three Guys Walk Into a Bar, which was Joe, uh, Ma Malcolm Crowe, who's also in Ink in, in, in the Pine Deep books, and Sam Hunter. Um, and that one's going to be in, in the, the Joe Ledger short story collection, reprinted in that, too. Fantastic. Um, Somebody just wrote, actually, could we get five guys walk into a bar? Yeah. <laughs> um, if I included Monk Addison and um, maybe Toys, that could be a whole bunch of fun. Oh, God, that would be fun. That would be a personality clash. I think. <laughs> Oh my pretty God. sure somebody would go to the hospital. It would end in tears. Yeah. <laughs> what character from any other writer's universe would you like to bring into the Joe Ledger series? Well, actually, I did with Rentless. Yes. Rentless. Yes, one of did. my favorite writers and one of my best friends is, is Joe Lansdale. His Happen Leonard series is one of my all-time favorite mystery series. And, and Joe is he's one of the greatest writers of our age, possibly the greatest living short story writer. And um, he encouraged me, in fact, to put Happen Leonard in Relentless. And it's not a spoiler because he's been talking about it and I've been talking about it. But Happen Leonard actually are in the Joe Le uh, are in Relentless, and Joe hangs out with them for a little bit. Yeah, um, great so characters. That that was one of my favorites. But also, you know, um, Agent Franks from the Monster Hunter International universe was in uh, one of my shorts. Uh, was in uh, was it Code Zero? No, Dogs of War. Dogs of War. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and there's a couple other characters that have crossed over. Probably characters from what, uh, my buddy Weston Oaks' uh, Sleeper's World is going to, or his um, SEAL Team 666. They've been name checked, but they match yes. in a Joe Ledger book. That's uh, right. And Wes and I are actually writing a series of military science fiction novels together that we have put in our contract that they have, they, they have to offer it to Ray first to read. Yes, please. Um, it's going to be yes, fun. Yes, please. Military science fiction set in the future. It's, uh, yeah, we're going to have a whole bunch of fun with that. I'm loving all of this. So you have no problem putting your characters through hell. <laughs> um, and we love you for it, mostly. Given the tragic ending of Rage, did you second guess any scenes in Relentless with the thought that it may be too much for readers? No, I, I, I trust my readers can follow me where I go. If you can, if you guys can survive the end of of Dragon Factory, with what happens with Grace, um, I think you're good for anything. And though, granted, the end of Rage was was leveling up a little bit, turning that dial to eleven. Um, at the same time, um, I knew my my dedicated readers could follow it, could handle it. Though I did get a lot of hate mail from people telling me I was a bad bad man. I think at this point the readers would forgive you a lot. Just don't hurt ghost. I will say for the record, the one character who is absolutely never going to get killed in a Joe Ledger book is ghost. There we go. No one else is safe, but ghost is safe. Yay. Um, we like ghost. Yeah. He may retire. He may age out and retire at some point. And that we, know, happens. we know ghost and Banshee had a litter of puppies. So there's always possibility of, you know, but, but um, isn't Ghost, Baskerville one of uh, Ghost's kids? Yep, yep, he yep. is. Um, did I, did I Ghost pillage Ramsey. Jonathan's closet? No, he sent this to me. Yes. Yep. Actually, I actually have a couple more I want to send to you too. 
Oh, of sweet. Um, um, Ray, Ray is a, a slightly smaller version of me, and uh, <laughs> I have some shirts that, that uh, are older. They're very comfy. I've yeah. never owned a Hawaiian shirt. They're very comfy. I see the wisdom of it. Yes. Um, uh, is there a church origin in the works? <laughs> no, there is not. Though we are up to 41 people now who, who have figured out who church is. Ray was the first person to know who church was. But um, we have 41 people who figured it out, but I'm never going to do a full origin story on church. I love dropping clues and torturing you folks. Yep. Ray, the book Rage has the most useful clues. Since Rage came out, we've tripled the number of people who have guessed who, who church is. There you go. Um, what do I do as an encore after Project Hail Mary and now Relentless? It's been a hell of a good year in that respect. It's been a terrible year otherwise. I think there's but in another book you can Audiobooks, do. it's been a damn good year. I'm working on something right now that I love. I am in geek heaven. Um, can you tell us? I don't know if I can. Oh. We'll have to do I, this again when you can. I don't know if I... You know what? Talk amongst yourselves. Let me... If there's anything online about, you know, the, the book and the author, then I'll assume that it's okay to say. <laughs> well, while, um, while he's doing that, let me, let me handle a, a, a question then. Um, um, Robin Marks asks, how, how, do, how do we happen to choose your fans to put in books? Um, sometimes it's an auction. Somebody will do a charity auction and win, a, win an opportunity like Maya Cleave did in, in Relentless. Um, she aggressively won that that auction at Superstars um, in Colorado Springs last year, charity auction. Um, sometimes it's a contest I'll have. Um, sometimes it's somebody, a friend of mine, a figure, well, I really like this person. Let me do something horrible to them. So there's a lot of different ways. Um, I'm seeing blurbs about this on Goodreads and other places. It's a title expected in October. Do you think it's permissible for me to say? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next book I'm working on is The Apollo Murders by astronaut Chris Hadfield. Outstanding. I get to talk to Chris Hadfield. He's an astronaut. It yeah, freaks me out. Yeah, that, um, that would freak me out too. And it's a damn good book. He is a really, really good writer. And it's going to yeah. be really fun. I'm so so about that. Um, Given the events of the last book, Rage, did I approach Joe's voice any differently? I just play the character. I just play the ball where it lies. You know, it's Jonathan's fault if the ball happens to lie in, you know, the sewer aspect of an abattoir, then I play it. Um, so it's all about the text, you know, where where I am, what I need, what's going on as to how, you know, Joe sounds. Big vocal change? No, he's still Joe. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. There, there, I, I, I have just started listening to the audiobook. I haven't gotten to certain scenes yet where, where Joe is lost in the darkness. So uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Okay. We're pretty close to being out of time here. I think we've actually okay. run over time. So let's. let's... Um, I will say to anybody who's not in the San Diego area, if you ever find yourself in San Diego for any reason, traveling, Comic Con, any of that stuff, pay a visit to Mysterious Galaxy. I love me a bookstore. And I love me that bookstore, especially. It is so amazing and great. And yeah. the staff is phenomenal. The layout's incredible. I love that bookstore. So and, and, please go visit. And, and just be conscious real quick before you uh, end this. We actually had an incident outside of Mysterious Galaxy that was so fascinating. We had, it was the, the uh, yeah, that. Uh, we had just done uh, an in-person thing. I think it was for Rage. If I'm <coughs> it was... Yes, I believe it was for Rage. Uh, and we walked out. It was late at night. The store was just closing. Yeah. Two guys in the, in the parking lot, you know, medium uh, like medium height, muscular, tattoos, beard. Just oh. appeared behind us like out of the silence. We turned around, and there are these guys standing there. And they had missed the signing, but we didn't know that. We thought it was muggers at first. Oh, and no. when, yeah. when I asked them, like, who are you guys? And they're like, we're pretty much Joe Ledger. These are ex Delta Force guys who were training seals on Clemente Island. Think about that. You go there to tr tr to train seals, right? Huge Joe Ledger fans, and they came to the signing, but got there too late. And uh, I love I love the way that I love the way that um, Mr. P uh, put it when he said, "We um, we do basically what Joe does." I was like, 
Yeah. It was Holy super crap. cool. And yeah. then he gave us then he gave us stickers. Yep. Snatch and grab all stars. Yeah. That that's that's pretty badass. You know, that, that was that pretty badass. Ridiculously badass. Yeah, this is my badass water bottle. I've got this and then I have uh, Half Face Blades, uh, which is a knife company from a former Navy SEAL that uh, Jack Carr put me in touch with. This is my. This is full of badass water, <laughs> which makes it very appropriate for this event. Which I, so. I I like it. Legitimately pains me to say we have come to the end because, like, I was like, I'm not going to cut it off. I'm not going to cut it off. But then Jonathan, being the ever on top of things human that he is was like it is a time and i was like okay okay it is time for me to unfortunately cut it off because we are we are at the hour mark but i can't thank jonathan and ray enough for joining us tonight and thank celebrating you. You. i mean you all know that relentless is out there in the world if you haven't already finished reading it even though it just came out today make sure you go and pick up your copy and support jonathan and support ray they're both absolutely amazing and we're really happy too that um jonathan is a local san diegan author we are very very proud of that and you can so, you can buy a signed book there's, exactly. a, there's a green button right down center there mm -hmm. can, I, can i get a signed copy of relentless I, 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 <laughs> okay you know i think if he's sending you hawaiian shirts it, it might be it might be in the works, but also too, I was thinking this and I was like, I don't know if I should put it in the comments. Joe Ledger Hawaiian t-shirts. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, actually the, the company I get my shirts from, Big Fun Shirt Company in uh, Eureka, California, we are start. We are having some conversations about a Joe, Joe Ledger shirt. We're looking for the right material. So we're looking for something that would be a Joe Ledger shirt. Now he, he wouldn't wear a shirt with guns or bombs. Um, I got. I want to go back through the books and look at some of the patterns I mentioned for his shirts. And I yeah. think I think we even mentioned Big Fun Shirt Company in, um, in in Relentless. It is. It's. I think so. But yeah, there's there's definitely. Um, I, I know at the beginning of Rage, he's in his Hawaiian shirt. Um, yeah, it would have to be fun and funny, and you know, yeah, there wouldn't be guns or bombs or monsters or anything like that on there. Um, but we'll we'll. We'll definitely yeah. do something with with Hawaiian shirts and Mysterious Galaxy. Maybe make them the exclusive um, place. Ooh, you can yeah, there you go. That would be so cool. Ever, this is a quick question. I'm sorry. I know we're running over. I I still have my wonderful patch um, from DMS. Uh, is there an RTI? Um, Not yet. I am I'm legitimately going to hire a a graphic artist to do a, an RTI patch. Cool. Cool. So there's an insane amount of cool things that are coming out. Even Long Relentless just came out today, and it's a badass, insanely cool thing. So, I mean, we all know that Jonathan is the most crazy, hardworking person out there. So no surprise in that. But make sure you all stay up to date. And thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, it pains me to say good evening and good night, but go out. If you have Relentless in your hands right now, you are primed and ready to jump into it or to continue listening to the dulcet tones of Ray as he narrates for you. Best readers in the world. I can't thank you enough. But we will see y'all next time and stay tuned for more things coming this fall. And we'll bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Thanks, stay guys. safe.